guys, Dane here, and today I'm going to be making the start at the very least on my review of Pirate Latitudes by Michael Crichton. So this is historical fiction by Michael Crichton, the guy who wrote Jurassic Park. It was actually discovered after his death and was pretty much ready to go, so they published it. As always, I'm going to read you the blurb. I'm going to go through and check out some of my tabs, and then I'll share my overall thoughts and rating at the end. I will say I'm not normally the biggest fan of historical fiction, so going into this, I wasn't sure whether I was going to like it or not. Um, but it's Crichton, man. He does he does really well. So I, w I was worried this was going to be a bedtime book that I'd finish reading kind of bit by bit in the evenings um, but I enjoyed it so anyway Dane reads Jamaica 1665 a lone British outpost in Spanish controlled Caribbean waters its capital Port Royal a cutthroat town of taverns and bawdy houses the last place anyone would expect an attack to be launched on a Spanish stronghold yet that is the plan of renowned privateer Captain Charles Hunter and Charles II's ruling governor Sir James Allman the target is the sheer cliffed and impregnable Manton Seros, guarded by the bloodthirsty Kazala. Hunter's ragtag crew of buccaneers must brave raging hurricanes, cannibals, sea monsters and the Spanish fleet. But if they succeed, they will make history and a fortune in gold. And so here it does say, uh, yeah, Pirate Latitudes was discovered as a complete manuscript in his files after his death in 2008. And I've read books before where, like, drafts of it have been in existence, but somebody else has kind of finished them off, and they don't always read too well. But here, um, you can tell this was complete and ready to go, and that Crichton had, you know, put all of the work in, because it, it does read very well. Um, so we get, like, a new intake onto the island, and um, one of them is said to be uh, accused of witchcraft at a trial. Uh, Allman chuckled good-naturedly. No doubt, no doubt. Pretty young women were often accused of witchcraft. But he uses, they use it as an excuse to, to get her naked, just to check that she doesn't have the stigmata. So here we go. Uh, she stood naked and he moved closer to her. He paused to put his spectacles on and then he looked at her shoulders. Turn around slowly. She turned for him. He peered at her flesh. Raise your arms over your head. She raised her arms. He peered at each armpit. The stigmata is normally under the arms or on the breast, he said. Or on the pedenda. He smiled at her. You don't know what I'm talking about, do you? And then he, uh, he goes and investigates her vagina. And we get a character called Whisper, and I just think this is some great characterization here. Whisper, no one knew his real name, was a large heavyset man with oversized pale hands. He had once been a successful privateering captain in his own right. Then he had gone on the Manton Seros raid with Edmonds. Whisper was the sole survivor after Kazala had captured him, cut his throat and left him for dead. Somehow Whisper lived, but not without the loss of his voice. This and the large white arcing scar beneath his chin were obvious proofs of his past. I know someone called Wookie, who I didn't know his real name, but I do know his name now. Uh, we, get a, we get a character called uh, Lazou, and we get Lazou is French. The name was a bastardization of Les Yeux, for this sailor's eyes were large and bright and legendary. She's also a woman masquerading as a man, which was pretty cool. She was badass, probably my favorite character. I just thought this was cool as well, the crawling devils. His crew was in good spirits, laughing and joking around the campfires. During the past three days, only one man had been seized by visions of the crawling devils, which sometimes accompanied the absence of rum. That man was now calmer, no longer trembling and shaking. Uh, this is one of the ways that Kazala killed somebody. He strung somebody up by his arms, cut off his testicles, and stuffed them into his mouth until he choked and died. So there's a nice little bit of like gore and stuff in this, which I suppose you would expect, because pirates aren't necessarily like, you know, cuddly, are they? And somebody um, takes a leaf out of a bowl and starts chewing it, and we get this. You look puzzled, Englishman. This practice is unfamiliar to you. The Indians of New Spain called this leaf coca. It grows in the high country. To chew it brings energy and strength. For women, it provokes great ardour. Um, so it's cocaine. It's how cocaine is made from the leaves of the coca plant. We have a character who's a vegetarian and eats no meat. I thought that was cool as a vegan. Very pleased to see that, especially in historical fiction. And she asks him to go and get vegetables, and he's like, nah. And she says, uh, he, well, he says, I care not a whit for your eccentric fancies, and have neither the time nor the patience to oblige them. Eccentric fancy, she said, colouring. I shall have you know that the greatest minds of history were vegetarian, from Ptolemy to Leonardo da Vinci. And I shall have you know further, sir, that you are a common drip knuckle and a bore. Nice. A great little quote here. Uh, Damn you for uncertain quim. Nice. And then later on we get, Damn you for a king's bitch. I'm going to start using these. Uh, and then we have an epilogue which talks about what happens to different people. So we get Sir James Ormond returned to England with his niece, Lady Sarah Ormond. Both perished in London's Great Fire of 1666. But I happen to know that only half a dozen people are, are documented to have died in that fire. So that kind of unsuspended my disbelief. And it's a shame because that was in the epilogue, so almost didn't need the epilogue. 
But anyway, uh, overall, I did enjoy this. As I say, I thought there were some pretty cool, like, gore moments. The actual story in itself, it just felt like an adventure story. It was a more interesting pirate novel than Treasure Island, let's put it like that. Um, I, as I say, I'm not normally one for historical fiction, but I think Crichton did really well with it. I think his research was great, his characterization was great, the plot was good, there were lots of twists and turns, especially towards the end. Uh, some betrayals and all that kind of stuff. And we get some really cool stuff on, like, the politics of, um, you know, this, this Spanish-controlled Caribbean outpost or whatever um, which is cool as well it's not quite Dune or Game of Thrones but it's kind of heading in that direction where you got that like political intrigue as well so overall I gave Pirate Latitudes by Michael Crichton a 4 out of 5 so there we have it, that's what I made of Pirate Latitudes by Michael Crichton. As always, don't forget to let me know in the comments if you've read this book, and if so, what you thought of it. Hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.